Okay, here we are on the new and improved studio here at Top Fitness Strategies. And hello, my name is Andrew, as you guys all know. And we have a great guest this evening. We're going to be talking with uh, uh, Peter Gay from Barrett Fitness. And it's all about nutrition this evening. She is uh, a nutrition specialist, at least in my book, she's a specialist. And, we'll, and she'll go through all her credentials in just a second when she comes on. And once we start doing that, we'll I'll get into more questions. And, and if you have questions, feel free to throw them in the comments as as well so uh i can go on and on and talk about myself but this isn't about me this is about my, my guest from barrett fitness peter gay so i'm gonna uh, bring her on right now welcome this evening peter gay hi andrew how are you <laughs> fantastic this is gonna be fun so all right what i usually do when i when i bring a guest on is i like to tell the folks how i came across the okay. you and me being in the fitness business of course, I'm, I'm constantly looking at different videos, especially on YouTube, because I have a channel as well. Mm -hmm. And I came across um, uh, somebody doing push-ups, and then I looked more, and running, and then more, and making smoothies, and I looked more, <laughs> and this. And the more I watched, the, the more uh, fun I was having. I said, man, this person is fun. <laughs> and, and she's uh, very informative, fun, as I as I'll get oh, I reached out to her, and and through a process of uh, 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 Facebook Messenger, her and I talked, chit-chatted once, and uh, we set up this time, and here we are this evening. So welcome to Top Fitness Review with Peter Gay. Thank you very much for having me, Andrew. It is a pleasure, and I'm sure we will have a great conversation tonight. I'm looking forward to it. All right, fantastic. All right, first question I always ask everybody, well, okay, let me back up because this is a question I've never asked anybody. I love your logo, first of all, from Barrett Fitness is get your ass up and move. <laughs> yep. I love that. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That is the logo. Get your ass up and move. Right. And I'll be looking to it in just a second. But uh, so tell us, folks, how did you get started? Uh, into the fitness business. What is your background, I guess? You want to um, well, my background is I am a um, track and field athlete. I'm actually a, a former collegiate um, and professional track and field athlete. I am um, from Kingston, Jamaica. So I born and grew up in Kingston and um, got recruited out of high school to run track. And I ran track for the University of Alabama and ran um, post-collegiate track and field representing the country of Jamaica um, three years post-collegiately um, and represented Jamaica in, you know, events, the Commonwealth game, world championships um, and so forth. So that's kind of how the, the, the fitness aspect of it got started, I would say. Okay. So you being from Jamaica, but you live in the States now, is that correct? I do. Yep. I, li I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia. After I graduated college, um, I take a took a liking to the South. So <laughs> Atlanta was the next best city and I've um, been here since. Well, being from Jamaica, I'm sure you don't want to go up in the cold in Atlanta, the old ATL, it gets kind of kind of warm. It so. does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I don't mind the cold weather because as a runner, um, and now I'm into long distance running, I prefer to run when it's cooler outside, but Atlanta have all four seasons, so I enjoy all of it. Now, wait a second. Atlanta does not have all four seasons. You've never <laughs> <been there. laughs> I tend to think so. It makes me feel better about myself, right? <laughs> I know Atlanta has four seasons on the calendar, but not too much snow happens in Atlanta. I, right, 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 right. That's true. It doesn't snow, but we get our fair share of winter and it, it being cold and so forth. You know, I mean, 30, 40 degrees is cold for us. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> okay. So we could talk weather all day long and ATL all day long, but all right, let's get back to the fitness stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. as, as I'm watching your, your channel and I, I don't want to say you're all over the place because it's, it's, you're, you're focused, but it's a unique kind of focus mm -hmm. on being all, all around fitness. But mm -hmm. I want to it's more on the nutrition part of everything. Okay. Okay. So that being said, when we talk nutrition or when you talk nutrition, when you do your videos, who is your, who is your target market? Who are you presenting to or who are you visualizing you're presenting everything to? Um, I'm presenting it to everyone, <laughs> Andrew. Um, fit, fitness, um, nutrition and fitness goes hand in hand, in my opinion. But um, when I think of it, if I had to choose one, I would say nutrition comes out a little bit on top 
of the you know fitness and the exercise aspect of it because like i always tell people you can't outrun a bad diet mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how hard you work out it doesn't matter how many miles you run how many weights you're pumping in the gym if you do not have a, a healthy diet then it's it's almost like you're doing it in in vain so it makes sense I mean, a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, trainers say that and and especially when you get more into the nutrition part of things like and it's so true. You can't outrun or you can't outtrain a bad diet. So mm -hmm. everything in line. So, OK, all that being said, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus more on the ladies. Nutrition. Okay. And the reason is because last week I interviewed somebody who's all about men's nutrition. OK, OK. So and we don't can, might we want can to focus. What was that? I said we can go there. We can focus on the ladies. Um, and I have some questions written down here. What is a big mistake ladies make in, in, with nutrition as they get older, as they progress? Because, and, and I, bring up, I say as we get older, because my, my, um, the, 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 the crowd that follows me or the crowd that I'm marketing to is the 50 plus year olds. Okay. Now, okay. I'm in that age group. I'm not going to ask if you are none of my business. <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite 50 yet. <laughs> I'm close to it, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> Well, I guess that you and I are not teenagers anymore. Right. I'm not. A, yeah, definitely not a teenager. <laughs> um, the older lady gets, what is the uh, primary focus that she should be on to stay healthy with her nutrition? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just women in general. I do find that one of the big mistakes that women sometimes make, um, two of them I actually think is, is true. One of them, we think just um, eating salads every day is the way to go. <laughs> but as someone who studies nutrition, um, and I mean, I, I live and breathe nutrition, um, you know, overall exercise, you know, overall health, all of that. But again, nutrition is so important. I am here to tell you that salads is just not the way to go for my ladies. And as you get older, even more so, it's definitely not the way to go. You have to have an overall balanced diet. And um, another big mistake that we make is we skip meals. Um, it's you cannot do that, ladies. We cannot skip meals. I mean, as we get older, our um, you know metabolic rate slows down. You know, and and mainly as women, we probably we don't exercise as much. You know, we don't. Um, you know, our body just changes. You know, as, as women, there's so many. We can go into that conversation. Just so many changes that happen in a woman's body as we get older. Things in general, I would just say things slow down. So you have to find a way to balance your diet to make up for, you know, the lack of exercise and, you know, so forth. So don't starve yourself. You have to eat. You know, our, our, our muscles are not as strong because we're not working out as much. So we're going to need protein to help with, um, you know, muscle repair and muscle strength as we sit down and a little bit more sedentary as we get older. Older. Okay, makes sense. Now you mentioned two things in your in your answer. Well, it says you mentioned the same thing twice in your answer. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the term balanced diet. Mm -hmm. Okay, now people, and I, I'm, I'm going to go on assumption here. People always hear the term balanced diet everywhere they they look when they when they look at diets or right. fads or what have you. And I'm, I'm not saying this. We're talking fads or any particular diet. But when somebody says balanced diet, oops, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry about that. Um, so what 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 is your definition of balanced diet? Mm -hmm. um, balanced diet is not cutting out any particular food group. My main thing that I always tell people: you have to focus on your macronutrients, right? So, and I don't really care for the term diet because even though it is the correct term to use, um, mm -hmm. your diet is what you eat. Your diet is not keto. Your diet is what literally what you eat. But I'm sure you you kind of agree with me on this. When we use the word diet as people who specialize in fitness and nutrition, people kind of misconstrued it or thinking, you know, we're talking about something restrictive um, but um, a balanced diet mean you cannot cut out any of the, the nutrients that you need particularly our macronutrients our protein our carbohydrate and our diet you, they have to be balanced so you know we have stuff like the keto which is kind of the most popular one now that you know when we're, we're cutting out carbohydrate it's 
If you do that, you do not have a balanced diet because you're cutting out important carbohydrate that your brain need, that your body need for energy, especially as we get older. The mm -hmm. first thing the body uses for energy is carbohydrate. Now, what's important is that we have to make sure we choose wise carbohydrates, smart carbohydrates, because we need that fiber. Again, as we get older, you know, certain things like colon cancer, you know, carbohydrates are your fresh fruits and vegetables, and you need that roughage to help keep your colon clean. That's going to help prevent colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I agree 1000% with that. And I'm glad you brought up fruits and vegetables, because in my opinion, and this is what I was brought up and the more and more I, I research nutrition. Now, I am not a nutritionist by any stretch of imagination, um, but I always hear uh, uh, more and more people are talking about more and more vegetables. And yeah. I, I, I talk to, well, I listen to uh, one nutritionist or one uh, fitness guru type person. Mm -hmm. And his thing is, Eat a ton of vegetables because yeah. somebody, well, how many vegetables should you, can you eat? He says you can't eat enough vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that because, again, when carbohydrates, like I live for carbohydrates because it gets such a bad reputation. And just like the word diet, we were afraid of carbohydrates because we think of white flour, you know, white pasta, white bread and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates. And that's what people do not understand. And we need fruits and vegetables. Again, you know, he, you're, whoever you, you mentioned said fruits, but I say vegetables as well. Um, you know, one of the things you probably noticed from my YouTube channel, smoothies. I am yeah. the self-proclaimed smoothie queen, Andrew. And I make a smoothie every day. I don't care what anybody else say. I'm taking that title for myself, right? <laughs> um, so I make a smoothie every day and I put fresh fruits and vegetables in it. And people are like, oh, isn't that too much sugar? Cut the crap. I mean, if you're not eating the fruits and vegetables, you're going to go out there and you're going to eat too much protein, too much fat, saturated fat, you know, and, and, and junk food. So mm -hmm. your body needs the carbohydrate. You need it for so many things that we can talk about. But you, I, in my opinion, I cannot eat too many fruits and vegetables. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the sugar thing because this is something I've always wanted to ask. And I always forget when I talk to uh, somebody that's, that's in the know about this. So I want to bring this up. Because I, I've read too much and I've heard too much about people saying, well, you, you shouldn't eat too many fruits because it has too much sugar. And I say, well, no, wait a second. Let's back up a second. It's not like you're, you're dipping a spoon in a sugar bowl and, and eating That's the sugar. Right. It's That's a whole right. different kind of sugar. So in my philosophy, uh, being, being brought up with, with, my, with my parents, uh, big gardens and things of that sort, you can't have, like I say, you can't have too many vegetables, but you can't have too many fruits either. I mean, we can mm -hmm. eat all day long. Is that, am I? Am uh, I mean, to a, to a degree, um, there are certain fruits that are, you have, again, it's, it's, it's about balance, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there are some fruits that are higher in sugar content than others. Being an island girl from Jamaica, tropical fruits, I love my mangoes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you sit around and eat mangoes every day, just like everything else, I mean, you know, it's probably going to have, depending on your lifestyle, for people like you and I, you know, if we get up and we exercise and if we have a balanced life and a balanced diet and eat a balanced variety of fruits and vegetables, you mm -hmm. can't have enough. But if you're just sitting there eating mangoes all day, every day, you know, one of the fruits that has a high content of sugar, then you may run into, you know, some some issues. You just have to balance it out. Mix your citrus in, um, you know, your berries. Berries are just a great antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. So just balance it out. Have your, your tropical fruits like your mangoes and your oranges and your pineapples. But don't forget about your banana. Don't forget about your apples. Don't forget about your berries. Make it a balanced variety of fruits. And you will find that you can't eat enough of it if you if you do it that way. Fantastic. All right. All right. So you mentioned videos, you mentioned fruit. Um, and, and, and since we're on the fruits and vegetables, I want to talk to you about a plant based diet or mm -hmm. plant based foods. Mm -hmm. And it's up because I'm, as I'm going through your videos, I notice that you have several videos talking about plant based foods. Mm -hmm. So, my first question to you is so when somebody asks about that, 
because because right away before I was in this, this fitness thing years ago, somebody says they they eat all plant based foods. I'm thinking, what are they gonna do? Pick bark off of a tree? So what what does that mean? <laughs> Well, you can pick bark off of a tree, but then you won't have a balanced diet. So I'll be a hypocrite if I tell you to do that, right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to make it clear. I, I, I personally have a mainly plant-based diet. I'm not a vegan, but I am what one would call a pescatarian. So I, I eat... <laughs> I eat only seafood. That's where all my meats come from. So I no fish or red meat or anything like that. Um, and you know we can we can talk talk about that later. But um, I prefer to have a mainly um, plant based diet. You know for for one main reason, um, saturated fats. Right. I mean, fats are in, you know, the meats that we eat. A lot of people don't don't have access to fresh meat, wholesome um, cuts of meat. So the meat that we may be buying in the grocery store is just not they're, they're not sourced sustainably. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like I'm a PETA person. I know it's my name or, you know, I'm not, you know, for the people, ethical treatments of, of, of animal while I do believe that. Um, but I do find that having a mainly plant based diet is just better for your overall health. If you can limit, li I'm not telling anyone to completely take out meat out of their diet or even be a pescatarian like I am. But if you can limit the amount of meat, especially when it comes to processed meat, I've had someone say to me, well, I'm just having, you know, turkey or it's, you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, the slice cuts of, of, of meat that you can get in. But that stuff is so processed and it's so full of sodium. And a lot of people do not know that it's actually quite bad for you. Um, you know, when you go get cold cuts and stuff that's been cured and sitting in, you know, whatever liquid it's sitting in, it's just right. not, you know, the best for you. So I think just minimize the amount of eat that the meat that we eat is going to help you to, you know, lower your cholesterol, give you the carbohydrates that you need, give you the fiber that you need and give you the protein that you need. It makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so you you said that big word of pes pescatarian. Is that pescatarian. Right? <laughs> pescatarian. Okay. So you said that's that's uh, 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 now what is it again? <laughs> okay, so pescatarian only eats. Um, so it's a it's a type of vegetarian that only eats seafood. So there's no other meat that that's in my diet. There's no chicken. There's no red meat. There's no pork. No turkey. Only um, only seafood. Okay. All right. So, so the, I, I got to ask this question then. So mm -hmm. you live in, in, in Atlanta, yes. which is like the second or third largest city in the United States, if I recall, it was in the top five. I know that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right. You're, 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 you're not around any coastline anywhere. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it's a big city. So yes, it's readily available. Mm -hmm. How fresh is the, is the, is the fish you get? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's the way it's, at all. Right. It's not um, as available as one would think. But, you know, for, for me and because of my lifestyle, I can afford to go to the places where I can get the fresh meat, you know, to purchase. Um, and because I focus on my health, that's where most of my money go is in my mouth. <laughs> um, the food that I eat. I'm sorry, Andrew. I eat a lot. I really do. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can go to the places that, you know, are where sell the seafood that are, um, you know, just properly sourced. Um, and, you know, if I buy stuff like tuna, because I do eat tuna out of a can um, okay. from time to time, I, you know, make sure that it's sustainably sourced. Um, you know, I make sure it's um, it's it's wild caught and not raised on a farm. You know, those are one of the things that you you want to look for. And I actually limit for the most part. I limit my 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 fish intake to three or four different types of fish. Salmon, um, the sockeye salmon is is probably the greatest piece of protein that one could put in their mouth. You get the omega-3 fatty acids. And as women and as we get older, that's where you're going to get your healthy fats. And that those omega-3 fatty acids, it's brain food. And it's going to help keep your brain 
clear, you know, you're not going to have to take, you know, these vitamins. And um, I think there is a um, fish oil, I think one of the main one that as you know, people get older, why take fish oil if you can go get, you know, source a, a nice piece of um, salmon to eat, you know, a couple of times a week. Right, right, right. Okay, so uh, folks that are tuning in and watching right now and listening, I'm, I'm talking with, with Peter Gay Barrett from Barrett Fitness. We're talking all about nutrition, and we just talked about the, um, what was that word again? Pes what? Pescatarian. <laughs> we, we could talk for hours, not ask you that every five minutes. I know, right? Yeah, when you learn a new word, I guess you just kind of have to hear it until it kind of sticks in your brain. Uh -huh. So, um, it, it, it if, if, since we're talking about plant-based food and, and right away, um, so, so when somebody hears that, it doesn't know, I'm going to assume they, they go toward, okay, somebody's a vegetarian. Right. And, and that, there's, a, there's a reason I'm asking it like this. Okay. So if, if somebody was just a strict vegetarian, mm -hmm. no, meat, no fish, no nothing else, could they be healthy and live a sustainable lifestyle that way? Yes, of course you can. Most definitely. And then, so a strict plant-based diet, that's what they call a vegan. Um, and those people do no source of, um, of animal products. So they won't do so. I'm kind of like a vegan and I just eat um, seafood. Um, but people who are vegetarians who are not really vegans, they will eat like milk and cheese and eggs and stuff like that. Like I stay away from that stuff. So vegans, no source of and no fish, no blue cheese. I mean, no cheese, um, not, no milk, nothing like that. But to answer your question, Andrew, yes, you can. There are a plethora of plant based foods that has um, the healthy fats that you need, like your avocado um, that has the, you know, the healthy protein that you need. You know, there's there's things like I made for dinner tonight. I made what we call um, bulgur. I don't know if you've, you've heard of it, but it, it is a grain and it's mainly in African and Asian countries. And I grew up eating it in Jamaica, too. Um, mm -hmm. and you cook it like rice and it has a, just a high um, percent of plant based protein. And then I add stuff to my diet like um, moringa. That's that's a leaf, mainly in the Caribbean and African countries as well. Because that's one of the main things that you will miss out on your vitamin B, like B12 or something like that. Um, but, you know, you can get this stuff from the food that you eat. Your Most of your fruits, that not fruits, but most of your vegetables, you can get even just a, a little bit, you know, of, of, um, of protein from it as long as you keep it balance so yes you can live a healthy life on a plant-based diet and you some people may need um you know some supplementation like zinc um and b12 you know usually for people who are completely vegan okay all right all right so i asked that question because i'm, I'm trying to transition into smoothies since you're just so okay. <laughs> and i see a lot of your smoothies on there so um i my question is when you make a smoothie mm -hmm. you don't do you, Put any fish in the smoothie? Okay. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> so but the thing is that when most people who don't, um, who you know, are not familiar with like plant-based or pescatarian or whatever, the first thing they think like, oh, do you get enough protein? Yeah, I get enough protein. We don't. We need more carbon. It's up to sixty-five percent of your daily caloric intake need to come from carbohydrate. It does not need to come from protein unless you are a bodybuilder in the gym pumping weights. Mm -hmm. and even then, I mean, you we just don't need as much. Pro We're not bears. And even a bear who's bulking up for the winter, they're vegetarians. They don't eat meat. I mean, they may go out and haul the fish or something if they're in Alaska. But in yeah. most places, they are vegetarians. So why does humans think we need all this, you know, protein? So back to the smoothies. So my smoothies have no protein powder, no meat at all. It is just strictly fruits, vegetables, and my seeds. So I'll do stuff like um, flaxseed and chia seeds, and those have healthy fats, and they have iron and so forth. Um, and because I don't eat red meat as a woman, and again, you know, focusing on women, as we get older, that's, you know, and even not even older, but even just women in general, most women tend to be um, iron deficiency anemic. 
And, um, you know, if you don't eat red meat, in my case, that's something that I struggle with. But, you know, taking, putting in my smoothies, things like my moringa and uh, my flaxseed or my chia seed, that's going to give me the iron, you know, that, that I need. And if I eat one, you know, piece of fish during the day, in most cases, with a little bit that I'll get from my spinach or whatever, I'm getting enough protein. I'm getting my fats and I'm definitely getting my carbohydrate. Well, that's awesome. So uh, smoothies, I, I like smoothies as well. I'm not uh, a fanatic as I, as I should be, but mm -hmm. I enjoy them. So my mm -hmm. question to you is when we're still, still with the smoothies, uh -huh. if someone came to you and said, okay, I've, I've never done the smoothie thing. I need to get into it. What is the, the, the basic way I should start doing the smoothie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because so, as okay. You, you know as well as I do, there's guys and ladies out there, people out there that – put all kinds of stuff, yes. stuff you've never heard of into a smoothie. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of, I don't, and, and I don't know this for a fact, but like, you know, for me, it kind of turns me off. I'm like, wait a second, where am I going to mm -hmm. find all this stuff? Now mm -hmm. I just want to be basic that I can start myself and work my way up. So what would you recommend somebody? Right. And sorry, but I'm probably guilty of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and turmeric and you know flaxseed and chia seed and you know people some people are like oh my god where do i find that stuff mm -hmm. um but a couple of things that i would say first of all do not put any juice into your smoothie it's pointless for you to put things like apple juice and orange juice. start with a base of just water that's all you need and then use just say one or two vegetables you can do something make your base something like a green vegetable, like kale or spinach. Mm -hmm. So you do kale and your water, and then you think of, oh, can I get enough? Everybody can get carrots. Let's put a carrot in it, right? Yeah. And then you think of, oh, maybe I need a little fruit just to make it sweet. If you're telling me, Peter Gay, I can't put any juice in it. How am I gonna get that sweet taste? Hey, put in your banana, put in your apple, you know, squeeze the orange or just chop up your orange and throw it in there. and that's a healthy smoothie right there. You have your kale, you know, your green leafy vegetable, you have your water, which most of us do not drink enough water. That's going to help hydrate your skin. And, and especially as we get older, as women, you know, osteoporosis, arthritis, all that, you know, it helps to kind of lubricate the joints. And we know water is good for us. So you have carrots, you have spinach, you have your water, and then any two fruits. And then just blend that bad boy up. And I look at it like it's my medicine, right? Like I blend it up and it doesn't matter what it tastes like. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, Andrew, and tell you it tastes good. Half the time it tastes like crap. Oh. <laughs> but I'm just looking at it like I would rather drink this every day than pop a pill for diabetes or mm -hmm. high blood pressure or high cholesterol or something like that. So mm -hmm. just start with whatever you have in the fridge. Absolutely. And I, and, and I talked to somebody gosh, about a couple of years ago. Uh, and they started juicing or making smoothies and they was making just like with, with kale and banana. And so hey, that's it. They said it tastes horrible. I'm like, well, add something to it. It's just not gonna, that, it just doesn't make sense to me anymore. I'm like, well, you, you can't give up just with kale by itself. You have to, it's an acquired taste. If you don't like it right away, it's an acquired taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't just start off and kale and banana and a that's smoothie. Right. That's right. And that's why I say add some fruits because most people, that's what we're looking for when we add, you know, orange juice or whatever juice it, it is to it. Just add whatever fruit, you know, oranges to me are one of the best things to give it that Swedish taste. And you know, that's great, you know, vitamin C, the antioxidant vitamin C um, and whatever, whatever. Sometimes I just mix it up a little bit just to give it that color. So, you know, I'll put my berries in it to give it like a little, you know, reddish or purplish color or something like that. But put your fruits in there. You know, bananas and apples, they'll help give it that sweetish taste as well. I, I like to put beets in it, too. I like beets. Oh, yeah. Beets is great, yes. And beets has that sweet taste as well, and it's very good for you. You get away from the green color, too. You put a <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, and that's what a lot of people are afraid of. Red, though. You don't want to put too much in there. Yeah, the that's true. All you need is a little bit. That beet is potent. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. So, all right, Peter Gay, I told you I was, uh, only for, uh, I was going to have you for a half hour, and we're getting close to the end here. Um, before I go, I want to ask, ask you a couple of things. D is there any uh, uh, nutrition myths that are out there that you hear people say all the time that you just want to reach out and strangle them when you hear them? Is mm -hmm. there anything that, you, that, that comes to the top of your head, that, any, any myths out there that you want to? Starvation. 
starvation is not the way to go, people. You need to eat. Starvation? Starvation. You know, when people do these cleanses, what the food cleanse your body. I don't know what you're cleansing. I mean, the food that your liver to cleanse your body. Like, you can't drink any one thing to cleanse your body. Um, starvation is just not the way to go. And when I hear people say that I'm going on a six-day fast, I, are you crazy? Like your muscles need food, your brain need food, your your body you need food to sustain you. So don't starve yourselves, people. You're doing more injustice to your body by starving yourself. You need we need to eat. That makes sense. Oh, okay, that's a it's a good one there. So, uh, okay, so we're at, we're at a thirty minute mark, and so tell people how they can find you and how to get a hold of you. Now, before you do that, I already put a link to your website and also to your YouTube channel in the comments. But okay. if you want to go ahead and, and plug them again, and how, how can people get a hold of you? Okay, well, I'm on all social media platforms. Actually. I'm a social media junkie, as well as I'm a nutrition, because my goal is to try, and I want to get information out to people as best as I can. Um, so um, I am on Instagram at Barrett uh, Fitness. I am on YouTube, Barrett Fitness and Nutrition. I'm also on Facebook um, as Barrett Fitness as well. And I do have a website. It's um, Barrett.fitness. That's that's it. So if you type in Barrett Fitness, you know, just on um, any of these, I, sh I should pop up. Okay. And, and I say this to uh, all my interviews. If you're watching this later on, which hopefully you will be, mm -hmm. and you didn't write any of this down, what we just said, Feel free to send me a message and I can get it to Peter Gay, no problem. And then I, I can be the intermediate for you guys here. It's not a problem there. So don't feel like if you didn't write it down, you oh my God, how do I get in touch with it? You can always do through so go through through me. So it's not a problem. Be safe, especially if you're driving, listening to this for podcast. Oh, right. Keep your hands on the wheel for crying out loud. So, <laughs> so, um uh, Peter Gay, thank you. This has been phenomenal. I'm sure I'll contact you in the future and we could do this again sometime. Yeah, and, um, uh, one, once again, thanks for everything. Fantastic interview. I love this. Love your videos. Keep them going. And, uh, and I'll be commenting and, and I'll be cheering you on all the way. So once thank again, thank you so very much, Andrew. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to, you know, speak to your audience. And what I always say, if we catch one people, then our mission is accomplished. So Absolutely. thank you for having me. All right. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Okay, folks. Appreciate you being here. This is Andrew Tough Fitness Strategies with my new background going on over here. So, and keep watching in the future, keep listening, and we'll be doing more stuff. So, until next time, this is Andrew. And once again, thank you to my guest, Peter Gay from Barrett Fitness. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Until next time, ciao.